What is going on, everybody? I go by the name of Curry, and I want to thank you guys for joining me here today on Sneaker Fetish. All right, guys, today we are taking a look at a brand we don't normally take a look at. Normally over here, it's either Adidas or Nike or Jordan brand type stuff. But today we have a very, very special Reebok, a very special Allen Iverson question mid that I have been waiting for a long time to come out ever since I saw the first images of this sneaker. And today we're going to take a deep dive, not only into the sneaker, the materials and the story behind it, but also one of the designers who has a really compelling story that I think talks to a bigger issue that's currently happening in the sneaker industry as a whole. Without further ado, let's get into it. Boom. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Reebok Question Mid Bubba Chuck. Man, man, man. I have been excited about these to come out for a minute. And I'm talking really, really excited. It's dope to finally have these in hand. Very, very limited sneaker here. If you guys know anything about the Question Mid, you know this is one of the most popular Reebok models of all time, I want to say. Now, Nice Kicks actually did an amazing collaboration with Reebok to come up with this sneaker in very, very limited quantities. Let's jump a little bit into AI himself. Of course, unless you've been under a rock, you pretty much know the story of AI, but we'll talk a little bit about him and we'll talk a little bit about what inspired this sneaker as well. Now, the really dope thing about the Bubba Chuck as a whole is just how much history it dug into and how the little details matter so much when it comes to storytelling and sneaker design. Anybody who calls themselves an AI fan knows that Allen Iverson Trivia 101 is that he's an avid fisherman and that that he really, really enjoys fishing. So that's basically the story that's being told with the Bubba Chuck. Now again, Bubba Chuck is a nickname that was given to him back in his early days when he was still in Virginia by his uncles. So that name has been attached to this sneaker that has so many different elements that has to do with his passion, I barely even know where to begin. So let's just start anywhere. All right, now starting with the upper of the sneaker here, as you can see, there's a lot going on, a lot of different materials, a lot of different design elements, but all in all, this is a question mid, then nothing's really changed about the shoe itself. There's nothing deconstructed, nothing different, but we really have to talk about these design elements, these colors, and these materials. Now you'll notice that this sneaker is made out of a mix of mesh netting, ripstop nylon, and suede. Let's start right here in the quarter panel of the sneaker with this purple suede with this stitched Reebok logo right here in the middle in this turquoise and kind of infrared color. Really, really fly element, I like that. Now moving up from there into the rest of the upper of the sneaker here, you get this black ripstop material. If you guys may or may not know, ripstop and nylon are really popular fabrics that are used on fishing vests and other attire that people use to go fishing in because it's very durable, it's tear resistant, and it's very reliable in different kinds of weather. Now, in addition to this black ripstop material here on the back of the sneaker and kind of wrapping around the heel of the sneaker here is this nylon material here. It's a lot softer than the regular ripstop here, but the nylon on the back offers a really, really nice contrast against that black. I also really like this teal color that they use, kind of this turquoise aqua color that they use as well. Now, moving back to the upper of the sneaker here, you'll notice six eyelets that are encased in plastic with this yellow shroud and this red lettering on it. Of course, spelling out the word Reebok going all the way down. Now, interestingly enough, it spells Reebok starting at the top going all the way down. And on the medial side of the sneaker, the R starts at the bottom and spells Reebok moving all the way up. So it's actually a little bit inverted in that way. Taking a top down look at the sneaker here, this is where you see the mesh netting on the tongue. In addition to that, you see the gray suede tongue here with this really dope, it looks like it glows in the dark, but we're gonna take a look at the glow action because there's a lot of it on this sneaker here. This green kind of glow looking Reebok emblem on the top. Now, speaking of suede here, let's talk about the lower part of the upper of the sneaker here. You have this tan suede moving all the way down the shoe around the toe box and back around the medial side of the shoe, even going all the way around the back. They gave us a really nice amount of suede and it's a beautiful element that really really adds a nice contrast with the rest of the materials. What's wild about this shoe is that the colors actually work for me, even though there's a lot of them on here. The purple, the teals, the infrared, the yellows, all, all these colors work really, really well for me. Now that takes us down to the midsole of the sneaker here. As you notice, you have a gray midsole here that has these splashes and speckles of glow in the dark paint going all the way down the full length of the sneaker. Of course, we're gonna take a look at the glow in the dark action in just a second. Now, of course, of course you have the two, I call them the 
honeycomb, you may call them the hexalite, whatever you want to call them. You have those units both in the back of the sneaker and in the forefront of the shoe as well. Moving around to the back of the sneaker here, you have this yellow heel tab here with the red question logo and of course the red Nice Kicks co-branding logo right on the bottom of the heel as well. Now it's been rumored that this yellow portion here is 3M. We're going to take a look at that as well. I'm not sure if it is or it isn't, so we're going to find that out together. Two sets of laces that you get on these sneakers as well, but instead of getting one in a bag or anything like that, in some ways, especially I see this with Reebok, what they'll do is they'll just put the second set of laces through one of the eyelets and that's the way that you get them here. Taking a look at the outsole of the sneaker here. Now you have this semi-translucent outsole here. It looks like a smoke gray color, but if you look closely, you can see that red Reebok logo inside of that semi-translucent outsole. Now that's complemented by the word Reebok going vertically with the little symbol for Reebok right in the middle. That all glows in the dark as well. We're gonna take a look at that too. And taking a look at the insoles, one of my favorite parts of the sneaker as well. Again, lots and lots of details here. On the insoles of the sneaker here, on the left insole, you see that Reebok and Nice Kicks co-branding for this collaboration on the heel. And on the right insole here, you see the little Nice Kicks logo with that question Reebok logo inside of it, another co-branding element there. And on the heel of this, you see this kind of Bass Pro Shops looking logo with the question right underneath it. Now, when you put both of the insoles together, you'll notice that it looks like a map. And I realized here because of the element that says James River right along here, I believe, this is actually a map of Hampton, Virginia, which makes a lot of sense because that's where Ellen Iverson grew up and used to fish. So again, you have all of these little elements that pay homage to the fact that he's an avid fisherman. It's so dope. This is actually one of the best sneakers. I'm putting it on the short list for best sneakers of 2020 when it comes to storytelling and design elements. They did an incredible job with this. All right, let's cut the lights out and take a look at some of the glow elements, these glow in the dark elements going on in this sneaker as well. I'm excited to check this out. Boom. And there is the glow in the dark elements and it goes from the lateral side all the way around to the medial side on the Bubba Chuck. Now I'm gonna keep my black light on while I kind of explain to you guys what the significance of the glow in the dark elements is in this sneaker here, according to Frank Cook, who's the designer that we're gonna talk about a little bit later. Now the inspiration for all the glow in the dark on the midsole on the sneaker is actually to represent what's known as a tactical fishing lure. For people that are very avid fishermen, what you'll notice is that in the winter time when there's a lot of snow or ice on top of the water on a lake or a pond and people still want to get out there and go fishing not a lot of light is permeating through all of that snow and ice and it makes it very difficult to fish or for fish to be able to see any kind of lures so what ends up happening is that avid fishermen will use a glow-in-the-dark tactical lure in order to still get the fish's attention and draw them to it so not only is this a really fly design element it also is a really tactical thing that fishermen do and of course I'm sure that Allen Iverson already has a lot of knowledge about how to use a glow-in-the-dark tactical lure. Like I mentioned earlier, the Reebok on the outsole is also glow-in-the-dark as well. So you guys can also see that element, the Reebok going all the way down vertically, and the symbol in the middle is all glow-in-the-dark as well. So a lot of glow-in-the-dark elements on this sneaker that are all really, really nice. Very, very well done. Now I've turned the flash on here so that we can see if there's a little bit of 3M element here. I don't know if this is actually 3M or if this is just kind of a shining kind of element on this yellow heel tab here. It might have a soft 3M sheen on it. I'm not quite sure. Sound up down in the comments and let me know what you guys think this is actually 3M or if it's just kind of a shining element. And that's pretty much it when it comes to the Reebok Question Mid Bubba Chuck. An amazing shoe with some incredible design details, lots and lots of elements going into the sneaker here. And like I said, on my personal short list for best sneakers of 20. 2020. Now, I know a lot of people were kind of frustrated with this because Nice Kicks is a site that is known for being botted very, very heavily. So if you were not able to get your hands on a pair of these, I apologize to you guys. And hopefully you can catch them either on the resale side or I heard there might be rumors of a restock. Don't quote me on that one though. So I know a lot of you guys wanted this one. Hopefully you can still get your hands on them for a decent price. That being said, there were two issues that I kind of had with this sneaker. Now, number one issue that I had with this shoe were all the promotional photos 
that they used to advertise this sneaker. I felt like it was a little bit misleading on Nice Kicks' part because the way that they showed this sneaker was with a big green tackle box that had their co-branding all over it. Nobody obviously got that packaging except for family and friends. Now, even though they kind of made a little note whenever they would put certain photos up to say that the packaging featured here was a friends and family packaging, it still made people a little bit disappointed that may not have caught that and thought that they were gonna get a big tackle box instead of a regular Reebok box. But as we all know, Nice Kicks had to make this shoe look as desirable as possible. And the way that they made it look the most desirable was with the seating box or the box that got gifted to friends and family of Nice Kicks. I am not a friend or family of Nice Kicks, so I was not able to get my hands on that seating box. And unfortunately, I haven't seen anybody else make any videos or reviews with that special seating box that I can even link you guys to. So I'm sorry about that. Maybe I'll end up buying one of those seating boxes off of StockX because let's face it, all the friends and family stuff somehow ends up on StockX. But the bigger gripe here is the one that I have about Nice Kicks' misrepresentation or lack of representation for Frank Cook. I wanna talk a little bit about Frank Cook if you don't know who this guy is. So Frank Cook is what we call a triple OG in the game. He's been in the sneaker game ever since he was a teenager. He came up in Atlanta. He's originally from Philadelphia, but came up in Atlanta, started working at Foot Action, I believe, when he was a teenager. Then he went on to work at Wish Atlanta as a buyer. He worked on some collaborations with different brands and things of that nature and ended up getting a call from Jordan Brand to come and join the energy team at Jordan Brand. Now, if you guys remember what NRG means, some of the most incredible Jordan brand collaborations were all done under the NRG team. I don't know if NRG actually means energy or I don't know what it means, but what I do know is that all of the dopest collaborations that are worth the big money, those were all done by the energy team. So Frank himself was involved with the Aleli May project, with the Gold Top 3 project, with the Nigel Sylvester project, and with a whole bunch of other projects that were some really, really dope collaborations that a lot of you guys and myself love to this day. Now, Frank Cook was only there for a couple of years. I believe he joined that team in 2016. I'm not quite sure when he left or why he left, so I'm not even gonna get into that. But he ended up departing Jordan Brand and went on to do kind of his own thing. He started collaborating with some other designers, with some other brands, and he really started doing some fly stuff with a bunch of other brands. It was dope that he was able to kind of spread his wings and became kind of a free agent so that he could work outside of Swoosh and start working with other brands, again, like Nice Kicks and Reebok. Not only that, but he was actually one of the people that was the most vocal and excited about this sneaker when images first came up. As a matter of fact, he also shared a blueprint or some stock images of a previous concept that they had before they came up with the concept for the Bubba Chuck. Now, the original idea that he had for the question mid project was actually really dope. I'm sorry that it didn't come into fruition. He actually wanted to do a what the version of the Reebok question. And I believe it was called all the questions or answering all the questions, something like that. But he took different elements from all these different Reebok questions and combined them into one sneaker. Not only that, but the insole design was fly because it had the infamous crossover that Allen Iverson did against Michael Jordan, but it had Michael Jordan's silhouette blocked out and simply said, insert legend here really, really dope. But that project apparently got scrapped and they ended up coming up with the Bubba Chuck that he still knocked it out of the park on as well with all of the design elements paying homage to Allen Iverson's passion for fishing. So still killed it. Now, like I mentioned, that seating box also came with a lot of other stuff in there. It came with clothing, bucket hats, some fishing lures, a glow stick, a bunch of other stuff in there. Again, I don't have that. So we're just gonna pretend that I had it and that I showed it to you guys and all y'all commented and said, oh man, that's really, really dope. But my issue was that the more excited I got about this sneaker, I realized that I was this excited about it because I could feel Frank's passion from the sneaker. So when it came out, it was very disappointing to see that his name was not mentioned on really any of the major outlets on the Nice Kicks website or on the Reebok website for the work that he had done on this project. I don't know about you guys, but when I put my heart and my soul and my blood, sweat and tears in of something, it is kind of nice to be recognized for the hard work that I put into this. And unfortunately, it felt like he got kind of shafted from Nice Kicks and maybe from Reebok themselves from not naming him or the other people that were on the design team. The only name that I really saw on any of those websites was the designer of the original question. But for such a special project, I thought that it would have been really fly to give everybody their flowers that had a hand in making this thing a reality. Now, I wasn't alone in my frustration because Frank Cook himself took to 
his Instagram page and put up a couple of stories where he said some really transparent things. The one that really caught my eye is when he said, I'm going to say this and then I'm quiet. Footwear and fashion, to my knowledge, are literally the only industries where a person can be devalued and be really good at their craft at the same time. It is not based on your knowledge, connectivity, performance, or accolades. It is who wants to see you wear at an acceptable level of threat, especially if you're a minority. Now that really hit me hard, an acceptable level of threat, because you see that in a lot of different industries. Certain people may get certain opportunities, but they may also be seen as a threat. So you're only going to get to a certain level and you're only going to get a certain amount of praise before somebody else may see you as a threat and then you end up not getting as much shine as you're really entitled to. He also went on to talk about how getting back into the product side of the footwear industry has been a song and dance for two years and he gracefully bows out. And then he talked about pursuing some other interests that he's really, really interested in. And I found that part interesting as well because he's been knocking it out of the park as far as the product side of the sneaker industry. But I'm a consumer. I'm not on the corporate side. I'm not on the design side. And I don't deal with the kind of politics that people like Frank are dealing with, especially persons of color that are in that industry. But like I said, it's really a shame that such an incredible shoe was designed and created from the minds of people like Frank Cook. And it really feels like they don't get what they're due on it, except maybe a check or maybe some kind of accolade internally. But when it comes to externally, letting this person know, especially as a freelancer who wants to pursue his next project, really making sure that his name gets out there and the rest of the people that worked on this project, their names get out there. I don't know, it just seemed to be kind of lacking and between Nice Kicks and Reebok, I feel like they could have done a little bit more storytelling. Maybe they could have done some kind of a cover spread, some kind of a website spread, some kind of an interview or something with the designers of the shoe to make sure that everybody got their just due. I say all that to say this, guys, this sneaker here is a part of history. It's a really incredible project that was brought together by some brilliant minds and they really give us something very, very special. So if you cop these, if you wear these, know that you're not just wearing a sneaker that was kind of a cool concept that's kind of here today and gone tomorrow. Know that you guys are actually holding something into your hands that somebody took a long time and a painstaking process to see come into fruition and to be made into a reality. This is a special sneaker here. I feel like all sneakers are special because all sneakers tell their own story in their own kind of a way. But these passion projects like this that have so many different design elements and details in them, I just feel like I don't do it justice unless I really, really dig into it. And hopefully I've done that here with you guys today. As far as everybody that created this shoe, Frank Cook and everybody else like that, of course, I'm going to be watching his career to see what he goes to next, what collaborations and brands and projects he does next, because I'm just a fan of the game. I love this entire industry. So whatever the move makers and the people who are moving the needles are doing, that's where I'm going to be at. All right, guys, listen, that's pretty much all that I got about these. Now it's time for you guys to sound off down in the comments and let me know what you guys think about the Reebok question mid Bubba Chuck. Were you able to get your hands on a pair of these? And if you were not, are you still looking to get your hands on a pair of these? Or are these a hard pass for you? Sound off down below. Let me know. Of course, right down in the comments, make sure that you click on that subscribe button so we can welcome you into the sneaker fetish family to make sure you don't miss out on any more heat that comes through like these, because I guarantee you I have a lot more heat on the way. As always, I want to thank you guys for joining me here today on Secret Fetish, taking a look at these with me, unboxing them with me for a couple of minutes. I go by the name of Kari. This is the Reebok Question Mid Bubba Chuck, and until next time.